Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all out there this morning. Why don't we start with a word of prayer? Lord, thank you for letting us come to your house because it's always good to be in your house. It's always good to be surrounded by people who love you and who praise you and worship you. Be with us as we go through this service, Lord, and open our hearts to you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, will you join me as we together affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed? Let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of our Lord, who is conceived in the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sent the right hand of God, our Father Almighty. From this to come and judge and sleep with the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. God. He knows that, that each of us have our own private needs that we need to speak to him about. But let's spend some time with him today. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning thanking you for, for the seasons of the year. Even though it's too hot now, you give the sun so that we can have crops grow. And you give us cool weather so that we can be refreshed. And we pray that you will be with all who have to work out in this heat and, and have to travel in this heat that you'll bless them and protect them and keep them safe and well. We pray that all through this week and the rest of our lives that you will be our guide and show us each step of the way. Sometimes you only show us one step at a time, but we thank you that at least we know that, that you are the one who guides us along this life's journey. We pray for the the for our troops and for the other people who are working for your peace that you will protect them and keep them safe and well and bring them safely back to their homes. And we pray for those who are ill and those who are injured that you will be with them and give them your healing love. Touch them, help them, heal them, strengthen them and give them give them your peace. We pray, Lord, that you'll forgive us when we fail you, when we sin against you. That you will bless us and show us the way as we try anew to be the people you want us to be. And we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, with the prayer that he says, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. For we must not be the temptation, but it will be from evil. For thy name, the Lord, the power, the glory, and the glory of the Lord.
Our scripture readings this morning, first in the Old Testament, the book of Psalms. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 4. O God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I have life, or as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. Continuing our readings in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. <clears throat> For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. <clears throat> when they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was and wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Three things happened in the book of Mark before we get to today's scripture. Chris told us a couple of weeks ago about how Jesus went to Nazareth and he was not very warmly received. The people were so used to seeing him as a carpenter's son, as just one of us, that they did not see him as the Messiah. If we see Jesus as just one of us, then we will miss the resurrected Christ that died for our sins. After that, Jesus called his 12 disciples together, and then um, this book of Mark, uh, he calls them apostles. Apostle means one who is sent out. And he called the twelve together and sent them out two by two, giving them authority to call for the people to repent, to cast out demons in his name, and to heal in his name. So the apostles have gone out and they're doing their work. Jesus is still going around the region teaching and doing his work. And King Herod was on the throne and had just beheaded John the Baptist. Now he was really hesitant to be, behead John the Baptist because he knew that John was a holy man. But he was tricked into doing that. He was so filled with the guilt that, that he felt that he thought that Jesus was John the Baptist resurrected. He missed the real Jesus, God's Son. If we don't seek forgiveness through, life of, through the life of Christ, then, then when we look at Jesus, we will only see our sins and guilt and they will continue to haunt us forever. Jesus is the one that forgives the sins and that can relieve us of the guilt. 
And here's our scripture for today. The apostles have returned to Jesus, and they told him all that they had done and taught. And it was a very successful trip for them, so they were really excited. And Jesus didn't look at them and say, okay, boys, let's strike while the iron's hot. You know, let's get out there and do some more. He looked at them and he said, come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. He knew that they needed time to rest and to recharge their batteries and to get back in touch with God. It's not unusual for Jesus to suggest this because several places in the Bible, it tells of Jesus going away to a lonely place by himself to pray and to rest. Deserted or lonely places did not mean the same thing for the Jews in that time as they might for us. We might see the, a place as a quiet place to relax and to have a little bit of fun, maybe take a, some naps and recharge our battery, batteries. But to the Jews of Jesus' time, deserted places were seen as places of evil and danger. In fact, they had a they saw the land around them as being a playground for evil, dotted with a few little towns and a few oases where people gathered for safety. Where we seek personal space and private places, the Jews banded together as a family. And a person's identity was formed by their place in the family. It's interesting that Jesus would want to take his disciples to a dangerous place. But then you have to remember that Jesus was not the, only the Lord of men. He was the Lord of nature as well. And one of the reasons that he wanted to go away with his, his disciples and rest was because there were so many people coming and going around him, and they were so busy that they didn't even have time to eat. You know, life gets crazy here in these days with people coming and going. Seems like there's always some place to go, somebody to see, something to do. I know in our family with three young people, boy, they just keep us hopping all over the place. And sometimes it's hard for us to find time to eat. But you know, we've got fast food. I'm not sure if that's a blessing or not because fast food has just really taken over our lives, it seems. In 2000, Americans spent more than $110 billion on fast food. And companies like McDonald's have really cashed in on this. One statistic said in 1968, there were 1,000 restaurants that belonged to McDonald's, and now there are over 28,000 restaurants, and they're opening approximately 2,000 new ones every year. Eric Schlosser says in his book, Fast Food Nation, The Dark Side of the All-American Meal, that the golden arches are now more widely recognized than the Christian cross. And that's a sad thing to say that more, especially more children, but more people would recognize the cross of Jesus, uh, McDonald's, Golden Arches, instead of the cross of Jesus. So Jesus gathered his disciples, and they went away in the boat to a lonely place by themselves. Now many saw them going and knew them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of him. The place might be, have been deserted and lonely before Jesus started out, but it sure wasn't lonely and deserted when he got there. It was crowded with people. Jesus had been recognized, word had spread, and people had come from all the villages around that lonely place. Did they know that Jesus was the Messiah? Probably not many of them did. But they did recognize him as a holy man sent from God 
that could meet their needs. They saw that here was someone who could heal their sick, could feed them, teach them. And so they came in droves. As he went ashore, he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And then we also skip down to the next set of verses for today, which is a very similar situation. Jesus has his disciples in his boat, and they are crossing over the, the sea again. And they came to the land at Gennesaret, and they moored to shore. When they got out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him and ran about the whole neighborhood and began to bring their sick on pallets to, to any place where they heard he was. Where, wherever he came, in villages, cities, or country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and besought him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many touched it were made, were made well. Did Jesus and his disciples get the rest they needed right then? No. If you have little kids or aging people maybe that are depending on you, do you get the rest you always needed? No, not, not all the time because they can really keep you hopping. Sometimes we do get tired and need quiet times and time to rest. But there are those who need our love and need our help. So our quiet time must be put aside for those whose needs are greater than ours. Jesus looked at the crowds and evidently there was a great multitude of them because this is the same crowd that he fed 5,000 men, and that did not count the women and the children that were with them. He fed them all, and it, there must have been a mass of them. And he saw that they were like sheep that didn't have a shepherd. Now, sheep without a shepherd will scatter, and they'll wander off, they'll get in trouble, and they'll end up being destroyed or, or, and devoured by predators. Sometimes that kind of happens to people in this life. They get turned aside from God. They wander off in a not-so-good direction, and they end up with all kinds of troubles. They need someone in their lives to direct them and to give them the love and the guidance they need, just as we need Jesus Jesus saw people who needed to be taught about life and love and eternal life and eternal love, about faith and trust and about the goodness and power of God. These people may not have had the faith that Jesus was the Messiah, but they had the faith in his healing power. They believed that if they could just touch the fringe of his garment, that they were be, would be healed and they would be made whole. Now Jesus, as you know, was a Jew, and he understood Mosaic law, and he followed Mosaic law. And in the Old Testament, it's in Numbers 15, 37 through 40, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the people of Israel and bid them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations. And to put the tassel of, uh, put upon the tassel of each corner a cord of blue, and it shall be to you a tassel to look upon, and remember all the commandments of the Lord. To do them, not to follow after your own heart and your own eyes, which you are inclined to go after wantonly. So you shall remember and do all my commandments, and be holy to your God. And so Jesus had the tassel or the fringe on his garments. And the people recognized that the power of Jesus could come through a touch on his garments. These scriptures, they sounded so easy, you know, at first. 
well, they're about rest. You know, God, I mean, Jesus told his people he wanted them to rest. But then circumstances caused him, them not to rest. And that's kind of like everyday life. But they raise some questions within us that we need to consider. Are we too busy to recognize Jesus Christ, the one that loves us so much that he gave his life that we might have eternal life? In our busy world today, it's easy to have Jesus crowded out by all the thoughts and the needs that are going on. Is Jesus just there to pray to only when we have needs? A name to use in prayer to tell God what we want him to do? Or is he an active presence in our lives, in joys, in sorrows, and in all times? Are we too busy living our lives to recognize the needs of those around us? In Sunday school today, we talked about how quite often we don't know all of our neighbors anymore like people used to a long time ago because I couldn't remember my mom and dad knew everybody that lived around them and three quarters of the town as well. But it seems like we are so busy with our lives that we fail to connect with the people around us. Are we stuck in a mode that says, if we don't see others' needs, then they don't exist? And there are people who think if they do not see a pro problem or recognize a problem, then it does not exist. Do we remember that in order to effectively share Jesus Christ with others, we must help meet their basic immediate needs? before they can hear about Jesus' sacrificial love. You, like it's been said, you just can't teach the, about the Gospels to somebody whose belly's hungry and whose life is just a real despair. Do we recognize that sometimes we need quiet time with God to settle our thoughts, to refresh our minds, to spend time with the one who loves us dearly. New thoughts and ideas can come in quiet times, but we must use the love and compassion of Jesus Christ to touch the people of this world. So yes, we need, need the rest that God so graciously gives us. And yes, we need to stay in touch with the people who are all around us and help meet whatever needs that we can. In Jesus' name I pray. Lord, thank you that you give us Jesus for an example and you show us the way. But I, I have to admit sometimes we're hesitant about doing anything, about getting involved. The big thing anymore is don't get involved. Lord, help us to be involved. Help us to be sensitive to the needs of others. Help us to let your light shine through us and share your love with all people. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. May the Lord go with you this week and into the rest of your lives, meeting your needs and helping you to meet the needs of others. Amen.